Hello everyone and welcome back to my psychology channel where I talk about trauma, growing up in a dysfunctional home, relationships, attachment styles, and more. In this video, I'm going to be going over trust. And if you feel that you have so-called trust issues, if you're feeling hypervigilant around people or intimate relationships, and looking over your shoulder, feeling uh, pulled to snoop into your partner's phone, feel that your friends are out to sabotage you, feel that you lack confidence and are constantly on the brink of being fired, you might be struggling with these feelings. And so I made this video for you and I'm going to be going over how trust and safety are fundamentally linked, how working on safety, feelings of safety can help you overcome your trust issues, how these feelings are developed, um, what causes distress or dis-ease, feelings that are not easy, feeling like you're not at ease, and at the end, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to work on developing those feelings of trust and safety. So I see the foundation beneath difficulty with trust as inseparable from feelings of lack of safety. Therefore, I'm going to be looking at uh, mistrust through that lens and we'll explore the concept through the lens of lack of safety. So lack of feeling of safety or insecurity could be developed by marked instability in childhood. And this doesn't necessarily need to uh, come from a chaotic family environment, a dysfunctional family, an alcoholic family or whatnot. It could also just be developed due to growing up in a high conflict country, um, time of war, financial insecurity, and so forth. And just as lack of trust within the lack of safety could be experienced in relationships to other people. For example, if you were physically violated, not taken care of, um, perhaps you witnessed one of your parents expressing violence towards your other parents. Um, and thus in life, you have developed this feeling of hypervigilance, mistrust towards either people, feeling that you can be violated in one way or another, that feeling of safety is compromised. Also, feelings of distrust can arise within yourself. So if you grew up in a household where you were maybe dismissed or your opinions and thoughts were not valued, you were constantly criticized, you may have developed feelings of lack of autonomy and agency within yourself. You have difficulty understanding who you are and trusting yourself. Feeling that you're not as maybe capable as others, feeling that you're not as competent or able to compete, um, the feeling of uncertainty in your abilities and your fundamental value. So this feeling of lack of trust, of safety, is marked by hypervigilant behavior, right? Always looking over your shoulder, waiting for the other shoe to drop, testing other people. It is all anxiety, uh, provoking anxiety-induced behavior and could also be linked to a number of other anxieties. For example, we can look at social anxiety through this lens. So feeling anxious, worried, when interacting with other people is a lack of trust because you lack trust that others will adequately evaluate you. And you also may be lacking trust in yourself that you're capable of showing up in a group in a presentable manner. So, of course, social anxiety, experiencing slight excitement and worries and not immediately trusting people is normal. And really only people with like strong psychopathic tendencies don't experience at least a little bit of social anxiety. However, when it becomes intolerable and the person, you, you can't present yourself, you can't be present, and enjoy being part of a group in a relaxed social settings, it can often be managed with drugs, alcohol, isolation, all of which then have their obvious cascade of outcomes. So looking through the lens of trust and safety in regards to functioning within the group dynamics can be really insightful and helpful um, in establishing those feelings of safety. Further, 
intimate relationship anxiety. People with insecure attachment styles will experience this. Often people with anxious um, attachment styles, disorganized and even detachment. There is a lack of trust that the partner has your best interest. There's a feeling that the other might be manipulating you in some way. Maybe lack of trust that the other loves you or values you, anxiety around that. That too comes from feelings of lack of safety because it's a fear of loneliness, fear of abandonment, and is usually marked with hypervigilance around your um, way you feel and also your behavior, such as monitoring your partner's face expressions, snooping in their technology and devices, and investing energy into controlling the relationship and making sure you get a lot of attention, so facilitating some attention-seeking um, behavior. Anxiety is around work and not feeling competent, not feeling that you have agency. Feeling unworthy is also a lot of safety and mistrust within yourself. Anxiety is around being fired, being left out of groups of productivity. is a feeling of lack of safety and um, mistrust that you can't compete, that you can't engage, that others will evaluate you negatively, not trusting others, not trusting yourself. Uh, feeling that possibly other people are undermining you in some way or have an ulterior motive are all evocative, evocative of trust and of lack of safety, feelings of lack of safety. And I also want to just take a step back and say that, um, of course, being betrayed by others and lied to and cheated are all aspects of a normal human experience. And right now we're kind of overall living in a time of misinformation or fake news, feeling like we can't trust the media, who do we trust, who do we, we look to. There's a lot of anxiety right now you know, about trust. And so, of course, if you're living a full life, which means engaging with a variety of other people in a variety of situations, in work situations, romantic relationships, friendships, groups, undoubtedly you are going to witness acts of betrayal. And if you look within yourself, you are also going to find that you too have acted in ways that may have hurt others and betrayed their trust. And of course, not everybody deserves your trust and trust is built over time and it can be broken and it can also be repaired and not in all situations can you trust yourself and it is completely normal to doubt your abilities to have a healthy uh, uh, feeling and like, an adequate view of yourself to have a healthy feeling of doubt. The reason though it is important to work on trust issues is you help yourself establish feelings of calm and safety so that you can participate in relationships with a higher sense of ease and less of a sense of dis-ease. Also, projecting your mistrust and suspicions onto other people in your life who don't deserve it is oftentimes a cause of dissolution of relationships. And it's also important to learn to feel safe because it allows you to take more risk. The feeling of trust that no matter what happens, even if you do get betrayed, that you are going to be able to tolerate it and be able to seek help and with uh, support from other people to be able to overcome betrayal or really any negative outcome of any situation. So it is worthwhile for your mental stability to be able to find a safe space within yourself and a safe place where you can go to or experience yourself in where you can overcome the feelings of hypervigilance, the feelings of lack of safety, the anxiety around what it means to trust other people or to allow yourself to trust other people or yourself. Now, how to find feelings of safety within yourself? You can't really think, you can't think your way into safety because safety and trust is not necessarily logical or rational. 
And oftentimes in a logical or rational spectrum, you may already be able to understand where mistrust is called for it and where it's confusing. And usually it's always very confusing. But establishing feelings of safety and trust calls for positive relational experiences, such as working with a therapist, and acknowledging in which relationships you feel safe and identifying those relationships and that specific feeling. Also, working in practices such as meditation, breathing exercises, a variety of somatic exercises, they can all compound into increased feelings of safety. You can also work on that for the therapist. Finding coping skills for when you experience feelings of lack of safety and when you're experiencing dysregulation, coping such as grounding, finding a safe place, breathing, and others can help bring you to a more peaceful place from which you can continue your work. And if you have experienced intense trauma, finding safety within your body can be so hard. And you can feel like there's not a safe space in your body. Or finding a safe place can feel impossible because you don't even have memories of where you felt safe. So if you haven't felt safe, your you know, upbringing was marked with instability, you've experienced an egregious form of trauma, it's really difficult to find that. But it's possible with time and with help. Um, I am available for one-on-one -on -one coaching, and all the links are below. Also, let me know in the link in the comments below if you have any questions about this or thoughts or maybe some experiences. Um, I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in my next videos. Happy healing.